Hey everybody, this is Retro Challenge Gamer. The stage was a rehash of a previous idea of my third level, mixing both forest and underwater segments together into one course. This was also about the time I finally figured out how to make rising and falling water, and I wanted to play around with that a bit, and center majority of the level between two paths one could take to the level, one dry, one wet. However, it ended up eventually being a test bed for exploring different aspects of the game engine, and realizing I'm not overly fond of using the spring tub donuts as a stage gimmick. Either way, Enjoy the video. Since this level is called the Flooded Woodland, most of the level and the primary path through it is submerged underwater. The secondary alternate path is actually the dry one up above, so thus I made it a little bit harder to get to. Despite this, I decided to make the lower part of the underwater portion a little bit easier. In fact, I gave power-ups a little bit more freely and not too many enemies to deal with down here other than maybe the fish. Which I was a little surprised to realize that the fish, actually when they have no water to deal with, become little jumping bundles of death. <laughs> so an interesting little trait of Cheap Cheeps that I did not realize until I built this level. So a little couple secrets here at the end of the first section. Now this particular underwater segment was a little bit more straightforward than the previous one with all the spinning spike traps and things like that. This was more of an exercise in how well you could avoid spikes and other hazards that are on the ceiling and stuff. So that was the first portion, kind of giving you a little taste of what's to come. And I had a little fun figuring out how different enemies reacted underwater. The caterpillars actually just start swimming and become even more of a threat. So here's a pink coin that's actually fairly easy to get as long as you swim nicely around spikes. And in case you get hurt, there's an invisible block here with the power-up that I'm sure will help you. And now here's the harder part, the one that the first spike path prepared you for, and that's pretty much the whole underwater section. Just a small little area of a whole bunch of enemies all put together and you're on the final section of the stage. Again, I split the path into two after this, one dry, one wet, and a Yoshi, which I will admit probably does not see as much use as he should. But hey, he's an extra hit, and he helps me getting this red coin. So for that, I'd say the Yoshi well served his purpose. Bye Yoshi, sorry about that. <laughs> if I had to change one thing about this level, it would probably be this last portion right here. The water doesn't come up nearly as high as it needs to to make this jump easily. Now, you can make it without jumping onto an enemy, but it's really hard. Either way, it's a fairly short level you complete in just a couple minutes. Not one of my best, but still fun in its own right. As always, alternate routes and spoilers. You knew this was happening straight from the start. You can go up to the alternate route here and then head back, switch back if you will, to the start and find that first pink coin which notoriously I hide right at the beginning. And this pipe actually leads to a small little sub area. Not very big, but a small area with you can get more coins and hopefully 100 coins to get a 1-up in case you were doing a, one of those endless challenges. And these little donut things are pretty much reserved for the upper route, and I'm not sure how I feel about them, but hey, midway through you can get a pink coin, but you're going to have to drop down to the lower route. Not that you're missing much on the other side here, as you will soon find out. I mean, at most, you're probably missing a power-up and some extra coins, but really? Y you can just go and stop at the midway point and pick up that pink coin if you're going for all six. Yeah, these little donut things, they... I'm not really liking how they function. They're like awkward versions of springs, and you could make that jump with the spring, but I just didn't want to chance it, that's why I kept the cape here. And that should be the final coin. And where did you go with this final coin? In this final pipe right before the end. You get a little door here, which leads to possibly another 1-up. 
and of course one inside the block. And that's all the secrets this level holds, not too many.